Okay, so this morning I want to address a couple of comments uh, that I had. Uh, and the first comment that, that kind of rang out to me was uh, how the uh, Uber um, sale came along. You know, I guess the way I interpreted it, it, it kind of sounded like I might have hijacked the passenger and brought him back to the car lot and sold him a car. Um, no, that's not the way it happened at all. Um, I am not a very aggressive person, and most of you know that if you're on the channel here. Uh, you found it, you got invited, you stay if you want to, you leave if you want to. I'm not a very aggressive, high-pressure uh, salesperson. And so actually, the way the conversation started is the young man uh, was on his way to rent a car, and that brings on another part of the comment is why he wasn't looking for a car uh, in the first place as opposed to renting a car. Uh, well, he was on to rent a car. I never replied one way or another about, you know, having a car lot or having uh, a better opportunity than him renting the car. The passenger did all the talking. And uh, basically, uh, he had a car that he was upside down in. He owed $2,500 more on it uh, than it was worth. I mean, he literally had a $1,000 to $1,500 car. He owed like thirty five dollars on it. So uh, he didn't think he could get someone to absorb his equity. And he was kind of pressed. He, he was anxious to get started with Uber or Rideshare. And so uh, I think it was a lot of impulse to go out and, and get him a, a rental car. He did that. And basically all I did, um, his name was Cody. And like I said, it was a 30 to 45 minute ride. And um, I listened to him for the most part. And and uh, I told him about the Uber car that he was riding in was about, uh, you know, a $5,000 car that I didn't spend a lot of money uh, to get into this venture. Uh, and I thought it was doing fine for Uber. Uh, but anyway, like I said, he was into uh, a $250 a week commitment uh, on his rental car. And so I simply gave him a car. A card and uh, that was it. Let me know if I can help you. Good luck. Uh, let me know if you need any help on Uber. Uh, although I'm new, maybe I can help you along a little bit uh, and just let me know. And I said, if you would like to hand out some cards uh, for your passengers that people may need card, let me know. We pay a nice bird dog fee. No pressure at all. Uh, dropped him off and that was on uh, Saturday, uh, Monday by eight o'clock, um, he was on the phone with my son whose cards I hand out. I, I'm not a high pressure salesperson. As I said, I, I really, I, I don't sell at all. I mean, you, Hey, if you want to buy it, fine. If you want to watch it, fine. If you don't, I'm fine with that too. Uh, I let everybody evaluate the circumstance. So he called my son, Shane, and saying that he had met me and uh, he was interested in knowing what Shane could do to help him. And he explained this uh, situation to Shane that he was $2,500 uh, out of equity and uh, on his car. And so Shane was able to roll over. Uh, Shane loves this finance business. And, and he was able to roll over his equity situation into the purchase of his new car. Uh, so the, the Nissan Rogue, uh, you've heard me mention that, you know, it, it was a $10,300 sale and it was, but that was also including a $2,500 out of equity situation. So we were actually selling the Nissan Rogue uh, for, I think it was $8,500. Uh, or it might have been $8,000, but whatever it was, the selling price, there was enough um, 
difference there to absorb his equity in the selling price. So uh, he was ecstatic. This young man is not feeling, was not feeling any pressure at all. He was so thankful for what Shay, uh, Shane did uh, for him. Uh, he had about that same car payment anyway, and he upgraded to uh, a very nice car, keeping the same car payment and getting away from the rental payment. Keep in mind that when I picked him up and met this man, he was looking at a car payment that he wasn't going to be using, and he was looking out rental that he was about to add to his uh, uh, budget. And so, uh, uh, you know, it, it worked out great for him by no means, as you can see that uh, here that I didn't hijack the customer and never would hijack a customer. Uh, I, I want to point out that one of the things that I do uh, in my Uber prospecting is I have a, a tablet with a headrest mount. And so that tablet is on a loop, a slideshow loop. And it, it's really just ads on there. It advertises for the cars, advertises me personally, the amenities that I have. I can, uh, uh, well, I was gonna show it to you, but anyway, I will wanna put it back in the car uh, and show you that. And so that, that tablet, a lot of times, uh, it asks the passenger if they have any questions at anything at all that I can help them with just to ask me. That's all they can do. So it says, ask me about if you need a good used car. Uh, that's one of the slides on there. It says that tips are not uh, required, but appreciated. So that's one of the slides. It has one of the my car amenities on it, like my bottled water and, and my um, Tylenol and my antacids and things. Just ask me if you need it. So that that laptop is continuously sliding uh, different slides back and forth on uh, so the passenger, uh, rear passengers are seeing that slide. And I, I ask everybody to enter the rear of the car. I have some people that want to ride up front with me and I guess that's okay, but actually I keep a cooler up there to discourage that and that force, is some of them to go to the back. Now, when I've got three passengers, obviously I move the cooler to the trunk, but I keep that cooler up there for two reasons. Number one, easy access to bottled water if a customer wants it, but the, the main reason is to block the front passenger seat so they literally have to get into the back seat and they see the, the slide working. Now, personally, some of you out there may think that's a little aggressive to have the slides running, looping through there. Uh, but I got the idea from uh, damn bathroom urinal, uh, urinals. I mean, come on, you go to, to take a leak in the bathroom and you're, you're reading all this advertisement. You know, they've gone to digital now. It used to be the flyers that they put in the frames, you know, uh, and now there's digital advertising in the bathroom. And, and I'm a lot more subject to uh, take advantage of advertising that I see on, on a car ride than I am while I'm taking a leak or using the rest, restroom. So that's what my tablet does. It's continuously rolling slides through there uh, that suggest uh, to these people, I can help them. And that's exactly how it happened uh, with the young man uh, that bought a car from us. I'm so thankful that he's a customer, but he's also thankful as well. Uh, he was rushed. He rushed to, to a decision on that rental car because it was quick and easy. And he found out with uh, Shane and myself, we were quick and easy too. And we got him out of that rental. And so he's very thankful. And so, um, no, I'm never going to hijack a customer and bring them back to the car lot. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to carry them to their destination. And I have done that. Uh, if you want to come back to the car lot, uh, that ride will be free, but I'm carrying you to your destination and uh, uh, logging you off. And then you can uh, request another ride back to our car lot if we can help you. But no, I'm not hijacking any uh, uh, 
passengers by any stretch of the imagination. I'm, I'm a laid back Southern guy uh, and, and I listen. Uh, that's the way I've always sold is listen to everything. Thank you. Like this uh, channel if you have uh, friends that are like-minded. Thanks.